Hi, I'm Robin Hardin. Today on Dreamcatcher, team members from Pursuit for His Presence find peace through understanding their dreams. First, Key finds that going home can be a miracle too, even though the dream was disturbing. Juan's grandmother shows up in a dream with a very poignant question. Janice sees her daughter dressed for future success, but first, Aaron's dream left her quite a wreck. So me and my husband were in a car wreck in my dream and there was a dark spirit, not necessarily evil, but just a shadow. And then the, um, we kind of lived with it, followed it around, did not necessarily maids or anything, but followed it around, did what it said sometimes. The only time you could see that spirit was when your eyes were closed. So you had to close your eyes and turn your head and look around. There was another girl in the dream. I don't know who she was or even remember what her face looked like. She kept her head down and her hair over and crying most of the time, like bawling her eyes out. And she was like the devil's, or not the devil, but the spirit's uh, slave almost. So, and it was just specifically that one girl. And when she wasn't being bossed around, she would just mope around and not say a word. But. It's almost like we weren't dead because I remember specifically riding in an 18-wheeler with my dad. Where we were going, I have no clue, I don't remember what we even talked about, I don't know. But it's just kind of strange. Aaron, thank you for the stream selfie. This is pretty disturbing. I don't know if you realize it, but in a dream, a vehicle is a move of God or a ministry, and your dream starts out with a car wreck. That means that the plans God has for you, something has happened that caused them to just stop. They wrecked. God's Word tells us that He has plans for you, to prosper you, plans for hope, plans for a future. And something in your life has stopped these plans from going forward. And then you start seeing this dark shadow. You call it a spirit. You don't believe it's Satan. I don't believe it's Satan either. But it's a spirit from hell. It's not the devil himself. Um, you live with this spirit. Sometimes you do what it says. This spirit is manipulative. It's controlling. And you only see it when your eyes are closed. Closed eyes spiritually means you can't see. You can't see truth. You can't see the promises God has for you. You can't see revelation and knowledge. But closing your eyes, you said you have to close your eyes and turn your head around. That's a choice. That tells me that whatever has caused this car wreck in your life is a choice. It's a decision that you or your husband or the two of you have chosen to do. And it, it may be something small, it may be generational, but something you've chosen to do has allowed this darkness into your life. And the Lord is showing you this girl who walks around with her head down and her hair is covering her face. She's hiding her identity out of shame, out of fear. That's going to be you if you don't open your eyes spiritually, if you don't figure out what it is that has caused this dark spirit to stop the call on your life. God wants you to open your eyes. He doesn't want you to be a slave. He doesn't want you moping around. And we know He has provision for you because later in the dream, you're in another vehicle, an 18-wheeler. That is how we get groceries, uh, clothing, furniture, it's provision. God is showing you that He has provision for you. You're in the 18-wheeler with your Father. That's the Heavenly Father. That's who He represents in this dream. The Heavenly Father is giving you provision. There's a way out of this. And I just sense in my spirit that you know what this is. You know what has caused this. Ask the Lord for direction. Ask Him for boldness. Ask Him to open your eyes spiritually so you can get rid of this dark shadow. He has so much more for you. Thank you for sharing this, Aaron. Dreamcatcher is coming to you today from Pursuit for His Presence. If you are 
wanting to be in the presence of God, make sure you check them out. This is a, a bunch of believers that are just pulling themselves apart, being separate, because they want to hear from the Lord. They're not listening to what man says, or they're listening to the Lord. And if that's your desire, look them up. They're on Facebook. Let's, let's come together in His presence. We have Key here. This is the first time we've met, yes. so I'm excited to hear what the Lord is saying to you. Well, I had two dreams, both okay. of which scared me, to be honest. Okay. Um, the first one, I'm in the car. I'm not sure who is driving the car. I can't see. But you're not driving? No, I am. Okay. Um, we're driving, and the area is back in Muncie, Indiana, where I'm from. Mm -hmm. I know the area if I went there. Okay. Um, outside of this area, I see bodies, just a lot of them stacked. Um, I wake up because I'm like, I, that kind of bothered me, but I end up falling back asleep. And when I go back to sleep, I'm now sitting inside of the place where I saw the bodies looking out a window and I can see them there. And then that's all that I can remember of the dream of the first one. You weren't driving the car, so this is not your move. And it's taken you back to uh, in your past. Mm -hmm. Were you a young person? Is this where you grew up? Yes, ma'am. So he's taking you back into your, your formative years mm -hmm. and your teachings, the doctrine, you know, everything. You, when you think of living there, you take all that into, comp, you know, what was I doing? Where was I spiritually? Did I even know the Lord mm -hmm. yet? And he's showing you that um, a lot of what happened in your childhood in that period of time mm -hmm. was not truth, was not life but was death and it wasn't your fault because you weren't driving it. It could have been that you were a child and you were sitting under wrong teaching. Mm -hmm. It can be stuff that was done to you or said to you, words of, that were not life affirming spoken over you. He's showing you that in your childhood, in your past, mm -hmm. There has been things that were not of him. And, and for you to not take the blame on yourself because you were not driving. Mm -hmm. And it may not have been a particular one incident. It could be just life itself, you know, just growing up. Mm -hmm. But he's showing you the difference in there and now. Mm -hmm. And you don't ever have to go back there. In there, you were, you were, you were there. You were alive but they were dead around you. Mm -hmm. And the scripture comes to mind, you know, 10,000 can fall at, at the one side, and God's with you. And even then, even when things in your life weren't life-affirming and weren't what they should be, mm -hmm. He had you protected. Even there, you're there looking out and you're seeing them. Mm -hmm. And He's shown you what He's brought you from. Mm -hmm. And that's something we never want to go back to. And so your move here could have been both physically and spiritually changing, life changing for you. Mm -hmm. But He knows what you've been through and that's what He's showing you. Nothing that you've been through is hidden from Him and He knows it, but it's also the past and we move on and mm -hmm. we leave the death back there. And any kind of residuals of intimidation or shyness or uh, inferiority or I don't, I'm not worthy or all that stuff that happens to us, mm -hmm. because when you're living in that, that attaches itself and, and it's okay to let that go because you're a new creature in Christ. And all those words and things and actions and whatever are the past and now you have a new DNA, you have a new daddy, you have a new family and this is who you are. So that's it. It, it seems scary but it's what used to be and it's not what is from darkness to light and that's where you are and you don't ever have to go back because even then he was with you but you never have to go back my guest <laughs> right now is Juan he's part of Pursuit I guess your mom or dad is part of it oh okay is this your house are we in your house Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> he's like, wait a minute, no, it's my daddy's. I know where he's going. Man, he was raised right. We're in his daddy's house. <laughs> but, but I know the Lord is talking to Juan. Thank you, first of all, because I know 
you know, all these girls, all these women, and you're just sitting right up here. <laughs> that takes a lot. He's like, well, so you're a brave man. Thank you for coming and sharing with us. Thank you. Okay, you have a dream. It was a few days after my aunt passed. I can't remember if it was before or after, but um, had a dream that it was just a normal conversation and we was just like catching up because I haven't seen her in a while. And we were just catching up. <clears throat> and the only thing I like really remember is just her mentioning uh, the car I just got a while ago. And like she was just asking what I was going to do with it and my plans with it. That's pretty much all I can remember. There's a couple of things going on there. The Lord is showing you that she's still alive because she never dies. This body might be in a grave somewhere, but her spirit never died. It's as if she was just walking and she had on a coat and she just took that coat off and laid it down. That's her body, but she kept walking. She didn't miss a beat because she's eternal, just like we are all eternal. And she's with the Lord. But what is she saying to you? Whenever you have a dream like that, what is, it seems insufficient, you know, I, I mean, insignificant. A car is your ministry. It's a move of God as you get in it and you move. And so in, in dream language, it's, it's where God's taking you. She's encouraging you. The Lord is using her to, through a dream, because, you know, we don't talk to those who've passed on. Mm -hmm. The Lord is using her in a dream because he knows you know her voice and you know her. there's a connection you have with her, that you will listen to her. This is someone you respected and that you loved. And, and she's encouraging you, what, what, what are you going to do with this? God's given you this. You've got this nice car. What are you going to do with it? It's about choices. It's about the gifts that, that you have that the Lord has given you. So whenever you... You know, you think that you don't have any gifts, you don't you think, remember this dream, what am I going to do with it? God's given you a lot. He's given you a, fa a mother and father who are both in the Word, who both love the Lord. So many young men do not have that today. You have a, a, a solid foundation. You have your own car. A lot of people your age don't have their own car. What are you going to do with this? All this abundance that you have spiritually as well as monetarily and physically, what are you going to do with it? And don't forget those words. Maybe even write those down. Because, you know, as you get older and you go through stuff, always remember your auntie saying, what are you going to do with this? She's saying, you've got a lot. And the enemy's going to try to tell you that you don't. That you don't have this and you're not worth that and you can't really do that. And you're just, you know, like, this is your daddy's house. I love how you <laughs> hesitated there. But that's good. I mean, that shows that, that you know this is your dad's house. You, that's a respect level. It's not, there's not a spirit of entitlement on you. Um, but, you know, with age and college and wherever your life takes you, it's real easy for that to, to grip our young generation. So don't ever forget, everything you have came from the Lord. Everything you have, your breath, your car, your mom and dad. He chose those two people to have you. And what are you going to do with it? That means the world is out there. It's all yours. And what you make of it, what you do with it is important. And it's up to you because you're a young man now. There's, mama can't make you clean your room, you know. Mm -hmm. she, can, she can probably threaten you with the switch still. <laughs> that, that should be fun to watch. But, <laughs> but, you know, you're going to be stepping out on your own one day and having a family of your own and, and supplying for your family like your dad does for you. And what are you going to do with this? And you are at the age where you're going to be hit with lots of other choices that, you know, temptations that look good and sound good. But, but remember the teaching that you're getting and what are you going to do with it? Okay. That was not a lecture, by the way. <laughs>
growing old and how wonderful that is. Everything that God put in place, man seems to go with the opposite. And I, he showed me that it's the same with submission. But the word submit we think of is a bad word and yet Jesus submitted. He submitted to the cross. He submitted to Pilate. He submitted to people pulling his beard. He submitted. And he showed me that the m most authority ever, which is Christ, that walked on this earth, submitted. And we're supposed to be like him. And so the, I call this strong, submissive survivor. Mm. And that equals woman. That's who we are. We're strong, we're submissive, and we're survivors. Hey there, I have something very exciting I want to share with you. The new Dreamcatcher Journal. It's geared to help you catch your dreams with over 50 scriptures, inspirational words, and revelations, all pointing to dreams and dream interpretation. In the back, there's a quick reference to help you with colors. Maybe you keep waking up at the same time or you have a favorite number that follows you. 44 different time scriptures, I call them, to help you find out what it is the Lord is saying to you. Straight from the Bible, symbols that you can compare your dreams with and find the scripture that might help you interpret your dream. In addition, there's 195 different symbols from past dream interpretations that will help you to catch your dream. Order yours today. I'm here with a brand new guest, Janice, that I just met. Do you have a dream that you want yeah. to share with us? Yeah, I have a dream. I, um, I want to tell about the dream, but the first one I want to, um, it's my daughter. I always see her like in, in a lab coat. She's like standing, you know, in church and she has a lab coat on. And I, I constantly kind of see that. And I just, um, I pray for the manifestation. Right. You know, right. is it that she's going to work in medicine? Mm -hmm. And then she talks about it. But I'm well, it's certainly a call that the Lord has on her. That's yeah. her mantle. That's what he's put on her. Yes. And he's letting you see her mm -hmm. like he sees her. Yes. In the calling that he yes. has for her. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, as a mama, you want everything to go the way it's supposed Correct. to. Correct. But she has a choice right. in this. But if she, if it's something she talks about and is interested in, mm -hmm. I would encourage you to let her know, honey, I've seen you. The Lord has shown me you in this mm -hmm. lab coat. And you know, you earn that lab coat. You don't mm -hmm. just go down to Walmart and put it mm -hmm. on. I mean, right. you earn it. Mm -hmm. Encourage her that she's uh -huh. still young and she can still do. Mm -hmm. And if this, if she's talking about it, God's put that desire in her mm -hmm. heart. And now he has showed you, mm -hmm. she can have this. Mm -hmm. Just. Keep her encouraged that she can. Amen. 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 <laughs> Amen. I just had this dream um, Thursday. Um, but I always have um, dreams about like being in prison and like beauty shops and barber shops. But um, these, these were women in the prison and, um, and I started to stay. But then the guard appeared up and said, you're free to go. And the women could go, but they just stay there. They just kind of like... Mm -hmm this is comfortable, mm -hmm. I'm here. Mm -hmm. um, and then there was, um, I don't know um, if she wants me to say her name, but her name was, there was um, one of the ladies here in pursuit that was um, in the prison. And then it was like, I said, well, the guard said you can go. And she was said, um, well, I, I, I'm just going, maybe I'll stay with them. I said, no, we got to go before the gate closed. Mm -hmm. And the guard was standing there and the gate was closing, but we got out. We got out, and so, um, but the other women were still in the prison, so I woke up. Do you do hair for a living? No, but I'd be around a lot of hair. Okay, because really I was wondering why you said beauty shops and Bar barber's shops. But I'd too. be around a lot of Okay, because that's grooming. That's mm. grooming oh, them and, okay. and preparing right. people for what it is. You know, all of us have fallen short of the glory of God. Mm -hmm. We are prisoners to our sin, and unfortunately, many of us are just comfortable there and mm. we don't want out and mm. God has come Jesus has come to set the captives free and how many of us just so comfortable where we are mm. and even believers that are saved and going to mm -hmm. heaven they're still just comfortable right there they're still in a lot of Christians are still in bondage mm -hmm. they're in the bondage of, of pornography mm -hmm. they're in the bondage of 
addictions, drug, alcohol, mm -hmm. through the bondage of fear. I lived under a spirit of fear well after I was a Christian until I realized I don't no longer have to. Mm -hmm. Jesus came to break us free from whatever it is, and mm -hmm. it's not all sin. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's fear. Um, Poverty, poverty. Mm -hmm. There are families that just can't get out of poverty because it's mm -hmm. a spirit of poverty mm -hmm. and mentality that's, that's just been there, or abuse, and they mm -hmm. keep marrying the same abusive mm -hmm. man. He just has a different name, you know. All this is bondage mm -hmm. that that we can get out of, and even mm -hmm. as believers, we don't always. Mm -hmm. But the beauty is, you have this dream a lot, or mm -hmm. something like it. Mm -hmm. The Lord is wanting you to be the one to show people you don't have to live in this bondage. Mm -hmm. You don't have to live below. I feel like this is about people living below what God has for them. Mm -hmm. Even believers living below, not living in divine health, mm -hmm. not living free from addiction, mm -hmm. not living free from abuse. Mm -hmm. um, God doesn't want us in abusive relationships. He doesn't want us in... Mm -hmm you know, in, in addicted. I mean, he wants us free. Mm. He wants us free uh, with the Holy Spirit. You mm -hmm. know, that freedom that comes when you have the indwelling mm -hmm. of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. God's calling you to reach believers and non-believers, but people who are in bondage to say, mm -hmm. hey, come on out. The door is open mm -hmm. and they're not all going to come. Some mm -hmm. of them came. They didn't all come with mm -hmm. you. The person who we didn't mention their name, when it's appropriate at the you know in the right setting it's okay to ask them if is there something you're struggling with that I can pray with you for it doesn't necessarily mean it's that person mm -hmm. it may be someone totally different mm -hmm. but it but she represents or he represents someone that's a believer mm -hmm. and someone that is in a body of Christ so that's how come we know this isn't just the non-believers mm -hmm. um, but it doesn't always mean the person that's in the dream. It could be, mm -hmm. but it could be someone they might represent, someone mm -hmm. that's close to you that on the outside looks like they got it all together. Mm -hmm. But on the inside, they're in bondage of maybe something that happened in their past that they just can't get past. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe they were hurt or abused or, you know, words of hate were spoken over them mm -hmm. and that's still affecting them mm -hmm. in their past and you can help break them from that that's a that's a a calling to set people free mm -hmm. and that's that doesn't exclude believers mm -hmm. that's important to know mm -hmm. you know someone needs to minister to the believers mm -hmm. <laughs> so, you know mm -hmm. we don't just quit needing help Absolutely. once we, we come to the Lord mm -hmm. and he's he's going to use you you're that chain breaker you're going to be the mm -hmm. chain breaker mm -hmm. that's that's awesome mm -hmm. that just confirms a lot of um why sometimes you have to endure and go through yes. things yes. that you don't understand, why yes. you have to go through so much to understand how to be able to help them yes. and to be able to walk with them yes. and not just say, come on, because they don't understand that. So you have right. to walk with them from that perspective. From knowing where they were. From where they were. I had a grandbaby who died before her first birthday. Mm -hmm. And we knew when the last day came, we knew she was dying. And I'm driving my car, driving to Vanderbilt, saying out loud, God, I don't care how many people lose babies. I don't want to be the one that you use. Because mm -hmm. I knew that meant that I was going to lose her and I would have to endure that pain mm -hmm. so that I could have the, the compassion. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I'm you got the wrong person, mm -hmm. <laughs> get someone else. Mm -hmm. And so I absolutely agree. I can only minister to a certain level to people I have nothing in common with. I, mm -hmm. can't, I can't really relate to someone strung out on drugs on the street because I've never been there. I know mm -hmm. they're hurting, but I can't mm -hmm. relate to mm -hmm. that. Now you show me a mama who's grieving a baby, I know what she's going through. Mm -hmm. So everything that you go through in your life is preparation for mm -hmm. what he has for you. Mm -hmm. And you know, that's why we count it all good. That's a, uh, <laughs> that's a tough scripture. It Rejoice, is. count it all good. But it, it's become one of my favorites. Well, because it's where <laughs> God's calling you. Yeah. Otherwise you would still be struggling with that scripture. Yeah, no. But you know, it. You, yeah. you've got it, you yeah. know. And so this is just to help confirm to you that if mm -hmm. things aren't 
moving as fast as I think or whatever, mm -hmm. God's saying, no, this is it. You're on the right track. Because mm -hmm. that question came up earlier. Mm -hmm. You know the track you're on. This yeah. is the track. This is the track. Today's dreams were quite diverse, but did you pick up on a common theme? Everyone's dream had a message about the future. God revealed the devil's plan to wreck Aaron's life. Juan had a question proposed to him by his grandmother about his future. Janice saw a wonderful plan the Lord has for her daughter for the future. Dreams aren't always what they appear. Sometimes the most disturbing dreams have a message that's most comforting. A perfect example of that is Key as she shares another dream, only this one is about her daddy's future. The only part of it I remember is I'm at my dad's funeral. My dad is actually still alive. Um, he's, he's sick, he's been in and out of the hospital, but he's still with us, so, but this is a dream that is reoccurring. Mm -hmm. And I don't know why. It's been reoccurring for a while, mm -hmm. before he was sick? Yes. Does he know the Lord? Yes, but he, I wouldn't say he, I mean, he doesn't go to church. He's not like where, right. many times mm -hmm. in dreams, when someone dies, they're dying to self. And so although it sounds like a bad thing, it's mm -hmm. a good thing. And that they have surrendered and they, they've died to self. So pray that your dad will do that. Pray that he will, even in, even in his sickness, that he mm -hmm. will die to self and that he will surrender. Because even on, you know, as humans, we think of death as a negative. It's the, it's the only way to heaven. Mm -hmm. I mean, until Jesus comes, it's our ticket there. It's hard for us, but we've got to start looking at death from the heaven's perspective. Mm -hmm. It's him coming home. But it's a believer, you know, they're rejoicing. He's coming home. Mm -hmm. From us, it's selfishness, but we're going to miss them. But mm -hmm. pray that your dad dies to self mm -hmm. and, and that when that time comes, that you will have total peace in knowing where he is mm -hmm. and that it's a, it's a miracle. Going home is a miracle. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. We got more. <laughs> we're from the Bridge Fellowship in Lebanon. We were we were blessed with the honor to come serve Joseph Storehouse today for our Go Do Day project. Thanks to Colin for leading up everything. He was our fearless leader today. Joseph Storehouse provides nourishment of body and soul to families in need. We had uh, three life groups here. Uh, we had the Alexanders, the DeForge. Each month, churches, businesses, and people just like you adopt a month. We've been in here long enough, we don't smell it anymore, so that's a good thing, right? Oh, and see, the ladies were great. Look, you can tell they were, they're the only ones that really work. And these ladies on the end, you know, us, we just kind of got paint on our hands. You, too, can be God's hands. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Appreciate the opportunity to serve and God bless you for all that you do. Your love offering to Joseph Storehouse will feed many families. Catch us next time on Dreamcatcher when Heather shares a dream that's kind of disturbing because she's in the car with a married man. But you'll also see how the interpretation changed Heather's concern into great expectations. And then Alicia has a concerning dream about the behavior of her husband. God is speaking to us in dreams, and sometimes they aren't what they appear. I ask you to catch us next time, and always catch your dreams.